Hi everyone, today I am in St Andrews, the historical tiny weeny town on the east coast of Scotland. I have been here quite a few times because it's only 20 minutes away from Dundee on a bus and it's gorgeous and really quiet and I really like it here. But I have never ever ever got the chance yet to come rock pooling and today I have decided to do it. <laughs> but I am feeling very self-conscious, I'm not going to lie, because the place I've chosen to rock pool, which probably is at my own fault, um, is right where everyone can see me and keeps watching me. So here we have St Andrew's Castle. All the way along here is a thing they call, I think that's the schools, people keep saying, but schools is the schools. And that is the entire path that you can see. That's an old Rondon Cathedral. And then right over there in the distance, as I make my way over, is the really famous uh, St Andrew's Pier. So really, I am completely open to everyone seeing me. Also, in my bright red jacket, I think I'm just gonna be ruining everyone's nice pictures of St Andrew's Beach with a red dot of me doing Rocky Shore stuff. But, oh well. Um, so today is another rock pooling vlog. I am stocking up for winter, trying to get as much footage of different animals as possible. Um, so I'm just gonna go on the hunt, see what we can find, and hopefully there'll be some interesting stuff here. This shore is that there seems to be giant walls of rock, which means you can only really go down one section and back again right to the start because I can't climb up these things. by the rocks. It's so crevicey. Crevicey? Is that the word? Crevacious? It's not that. It's highly topography. topography. Hmm. This rock here is an absolute prime example of why when you're rocky, on the rocky shore you should always turn rocks back over where you found them. That is almost one of the top if not number one rule because the species that live on top of the rocks will be different to the species that live under the rocks um, as I will show you now a bit blue petri there the one I made earlier but it doesn't really work does it? so on the top of this rock we have lots of different types of seaweeds so this looks like a baby type of fucus a bit adult here we have uh, an ulva species um, looks like gut weed but early days I suppose um, and we have a few uh, mobile species so this is a common periwinkle but then we flip the rock over and it is a completely different story so so as you might expect, on top of rocks you normally find seaweeds, because seaweeds require light to photosynthesise and survive, so therefore being on the bottom of a rock doesn't really do much for them because they'll be in the dark. But there are other species that use the bottom of rocks as protection and refuge, and uh, can don't require light to live, and that's that's where they're adapted and love to, to hang out. They are the, uh, the basement dwellers of the marine world. And here, you can see that. So we have some tube worms here. Uh, so these are little tube worms that filter at the end. And then we have these, which are sea squirts. We have a beetle anemone. We have pain. Uh, I wanna say painted top shell, but I've kind of forgotten. A painted top shell, I think. Yeah, painted top shell. We have a painted top shell, oh, sorry guys, which has this gorgeous, come on focus, focus, gorgeous patterning on.
Yes, yeah, so that is super cool. Um, and then you have to make sure that you turn the rock back over because otherwise the zebra is going to die if it's on its front and all these species that are adapted for this lovely bottom they set up their home in the basement uh, are going to are going to die too so always always have to remember to turn it back over and just do it nice and gently Same with seaweeds too, uh, species that will hide under seaweeds to stop themselves getting desiccated. So if you move seaweed, try and move it back as well. Try, definitely, definitely move it back as well. Okay, so I've walked further along because I realised that I needed to make it uh, a bit further along before I <laughs> before I started uh, recording again because I get far too distracted. The end is there and I've started there could go to the end but it's low tide as of 10 minutes ago and looking at it I can see that there are potentially kelp beds at the bottom but not that I can get to it and to be honest today it isn't a particularly low tide so I doubt we'll be able to get to the low low shore anyway I think I've probably in quite a few rock pools around here that I'd like to have an investigate with and in the time that I've got I've probably rather than me spending another 10 minutes walking over there uh, this seems like a better bet there's also a heron hunting but I think if I went over there the heron would fly away can you see him? that speck So this is the uh, first port of call, first proper port of call. We will have an explore. Two fishes. There's the first one. And the second one. Safe walk from the session due to the GoPro uh, miss miss GoPro being annoying. Mainly going to be a lifting up rocks rock pooling vlog, which is fine. That's sometimes what you can do rock pooling. Not all rocky shores have a ton of rock pools in, um, and sometimes what you can find under rocks and in seaweeds are as interesting ish as a as a rock pool. So. Unfortunately, that's what today is going to be. Look how big they got. <laughs> Anything moving? That is a broad clawed porcelain crab. They are flat crabs. 
that like to live on the bottom of rocks. They're very shy, can be very tiny, and they are very, very cute. I've just left my GoPro on the side because I'm having some problems with it, so I'm just leaving it to like heat up. And uh, I've come back and it's made a friend. Logworm casts. Oh, here's a baby kelp. Oh, look at that crab. The so kelp hole fasts are an extremely important part of their entire being. It's what holds them together. Kelps tend to be in quite exposed areas. They take a lot of wave battering and actually works kind of like a wave break for the rest of anything uh, previous because it dissipates the energy. But to be able to hold on, they need some significantly, significantly strong, uh, like plant roots, but hold fasts in sea roots. Let's see for research purposes if we can get this little guy to come out. Come on. Falling in St Andrews when you find a golf ball. I don't play golf, but I'll take that back. Why not? Oh wow, look at this shell. Oh, it's a thing! Oh my god, it's huge! It's a whelk! It's alive! Wow, how cool is that? What an incredibly beautiful shell. This is a whelk whelk. Uh, I want to say Businim and Darton, but that might be the dog whelk. Look at him! He was just hanging out. Sorry, I won't make any stupid jokes. Wow, look at these crevices! Sponges dangling down, that's cool. Barnacles. <gasps> Worms, what are they?
What in the world? Please don't ask me to know what those worms are. I have no idea. They're worms. Marine worms, not earthworms. That's what bring you. Consistent ID. Look at the size of this limpet. Oh my god. It's nearly as big as my head. Look at this dude. There's my hand in comparison. Wow. He's a beast. He's a beast. Seagull just landed to have a nose at my stuff and then realised I'd noticed and was like, What? Me? No kind of stuff? No! <laughs> oh, seagulls, you're so cute. Ooh, let's catch one. Oh, got him. This crab looks almost in every way like a common shore crab. in colour but he was very aggressive and you can kind of see that his legs are starting to blue and there's loads of colour in the end of his claws and his back legs aren't uh aren't all oh, the back legs are swimming legs he's cute look how cute he is Hello. Say hi. Hello. Put him back. Near the rock I found him under. like whelk eggs um so whelks lay eggs to have children uh, they have hatched because you can see they're open but these are the remaining casts of them so that is it for this week's rock pooling vlog i know there wasn't anything particularly exciting I was excited by a lot of stuff. I've never seen that type of book before. I've never seen one that big and out and moving around. And I had a good time checking out um, the shore. And when you go rock pooling, you never know what you're gonna find. And the exciting finds like the lobster last time are things that come along rarely and few and far between. And if you don't go down and keep looking for different stuff, then you're never gonna find something like that. Oh. So I hope you like what species we found today. I hope you like coming along. Uh, sorry about the GoPro as well, that, again that's something that happens, but I'm hoping to fix that. And people ask sometimes why I keep going rock pooling or isn't once you've gone rock pooling once the same. I don't agree, every place is different and every time you go to a, a place um, that is different. So do it. I highly recommend coming to St Andrews if you want to come to St Andrews normally but also pack a pair of wellies and come rock pooling, why not? I will see you guys next week, have a fab week, bye!
Mm-hmm.